Hey fae folks, this video is going to be a lot lighter than my last video. I've created a category system for fairies that I'm going to explain today. But first, please subscribe so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Now there are other fairy category systems, so I'm not the only person who have done this. This is just mine, and I think it's cool, so I want to share it with y'all. There are five categories, nature, urban, culture, animal, and individual. Nature fairies are fairies that live in nature and are deeply connected to aspects of nature, such as trees or weather. I'm talking about them first because they're one of the largest categories. They might all be one sex or always appear to be a certain age. Unlike the culture category that I will discuss later, nature fairies don't tend to have myths associated with them that show them having societies like humans have or having life cycles. For example, dryads in Greco-Roman lore appear exclusively as young women. They don't have jobs or develop society. This is in contrast to, say, the Tuatha Dé Danann in Ireland, whose myths tell of male and female Tuatha Dé Danann, of reproduction, and of fairies holding different jobs. Examples of nature fairies include Boloko, Akathaso, Kapo, Kino, Pua, Anthushe, and Thunder Beings. Boloko comes from Congo and Zaire. They are dwarf-like beings with grass growing on their bodies who live in hollow trees. They are said to eat humans. In the myths, at least the ones I could find, there are no mentions of Boloko culture or reproduction. Akathaso are tree spirits or gnats from Burmese mythology. Gnat is a Burmese folk religion term for spirits. Again, I put them in the nature category because of an absence of myths about their culture and reproduction. In Hawaii, the Kapo Kino Pua are flower spirits or Kupua, which is a Hawaiian term for supernatural beings and demigods. Their name translates to the people who had flower bodies. Anthushe are flower nymphs from Greco-Roman mythology. Like all nymphs, they all appear as young women. And all the way in North America, the Algonquin tell of the thunder beings who live in the sky and cause thunder and lightning. They take many forms, ranging from birds to young men. Urban fairies are basically the same as nature fairies, only instead of living in nature and or embodying some aspect of it, they live in human spaces. They're like the rats or raccoons of the fairy world. Examples of urban fairies include Inkishe, Akaname, Kunawa Watalo, Bannock, and the Lords of Shibalba. Inkishe is a Congolese word that refers to a sacred object and or the spirit that inhabits it. These spirits live in human homes within human-made objects. In Japan, Akaname are yokai who haunt bathrooms and literally eat the grime that collects in bathtubs and bathrooms. Again, none of the myths tell us anything about their societal structures, life cycles, or reproduction. On a creepier note, Kaninawa Watalo are evil spirits from Australia who attack at night, strangling their victims with a cord. While they don't exclusively attack inside homes, they probably also attack inside homes. And they use a human tool, rope. There's no information that I could find anyway about their culture, life cycles, or even their physical appearances or gender. Another bath spirit, the Slavic Bonic, lives in people's bathhouses. It always appears as an old man. Ten of the Lords of Shibalba qualifies urban fairies. Shibalba is the Kiche Maya word for the underworld. Some of the lords of Shibalba had dominion over illnesses and problems in the home. For example, Shik and Patan kill travelers on the road, or Ahatokab and Alhamez who kill people as they are going home or in front of their home. Culture fairies are fairies who are described as having cultures, life cycles, etc. There are stories about marriages, births, jobs. The examples I'm going to discuss are the Abatwa, the Children of the Sea, Minahune, Yotnar, and Tree People. In Zulu lore, the Abatwa are a tiny race of beings that live in anthills or in tiny villages disguised as anthills. In some stories, they ride ants. They are also described as being nomadic hunters. The children of the sea, or seaborn, come from Persian mythology. They appear in 1001 Nights. Although they are a race of merfolk, the story demonstrates that they have a society. Jorah is a princess and a life cycle. Jorah has a family and gives birth to a son. Supposedly, the Minahune inhabited Hawaii before humans arrived. They were short and were skilled craftspeople, allegedly building Kiki Aola irrigation ditch and other ancient sites in Hawaii. Far north in Norse mythology, the Jotnar are a race of giants who alternately war with and intermarry with the Norse gods. Famous Jotnar include Loki, Angerboda, and Nord. The sagas depict Jotnar with different jobs, getting married, having offspring, etc. They even have their own realm, Jotunheimer. The Clinket people have a story of the tree people. They are described as the people who inhabit trees. The story describes why the tree people is old, why the tree people is father the child with a human woman, and the tree people have a case system. Animal fairies are mythological creatures that resemble animals more than people, but have traditional fairy traits such as shape-shifting, being repelled by iron, and nature associations. 
The examples for this video are Ebigane, Kitsune, Bunyip, Bay and the Cat, and Thunderbird. The Fang people of Equatorial Guinea, Northern Gabon, and Southern Cameroon tell stories of the Ebigane, a monster described as a bird animal that appears in legends and sagas sung by Muvet players. It is also a shapeshifter. Kitsune are fox yokai from Japan. They usually appear as foxes but are shapeshifters and sometimes appear as seductive women. In Australia, Bunyip is an amphibious monster that resembles an ox, hippopotamus, manatee, or humanoid. It feeds on women and children. Bayan the cat, also called Bayan cat or Kot Bayan, is a monstrous black cat from Russia. He lures people to sleep and then feeds on them. He has an association with iron. Either you can protect yourself from him with an iron helmet, or he wears a suit of iron himself. Across the Atlantic, the Thunderbird is a pan-cultural creature. It usually appears as a bird and generates lightning and thunder. In Shawnee mythology, Thunderbirds can shapeshift and sometimes appear as boys who speak backward. Lastly, individual fairies are individual beings that aren't gods, but aren't humans or animals. They occupy a space in between. They aren't part of a larger species. Examples include Amakaye, Dot, Subaya, Abere, Aelin Macmigna, and Sulkalu. In Ghana, parts of Ivory Coast and Togo, the Akan people traditionally believe in Amakaye, the guardian of the land of the dead. She isn't a goddess, but she is a supernatural being. Additionally, her underworld associations make her similar to other fairies, such as Morgan and Datsuabe. Speaking of Datsuabe, she is a great example of an Asian individual fairy. She sits at the banks of the Sanzu River, a mythical river in Buddhism that is crossed after death. The Datsueba sits on the bank and steals people's clothes. A bear is a singular fairy in Melanesia. She appears as a beautiful woman and lures men to her lake where she consumes them. Every Sawan, Aelin Macmigna, would emerge and breathing fire destroy the court of Terra until Finn McCool killed him. Sul Kalu is a giant hunter from Cherokee mythology who owns all the game. His name means slanting eyes. Hope you all enjoyed this category system. Let me know in the comments if you think there should be more categories, and if so, what would they be?